gets in the smoke. Read it. It's all through the scripture. Look up the word favor. That's your assignment. Look up the word favor. That is in there for the uh, the smell. When God smells out, then that's when God glow. He he gets in the smoke. Look up favor. Look up. It's all through Leviticus. Those portions of the Bible we don't want to read. Leviticus and Numbers. God gets in the favor, smoke. Just like you do when you go to a restaurant. It's the favor to make you, hey, let's stop here. God, he smells repentance. He smells repentance in a house, in a church. He smells, uh, he smells if somebody really wants a gift, then he gives it. He don't give it to you because you, you want it. You got to bring forth fruit, meat for repentance. He don't give it to you because mama dying, daddy dying, because you broke. Oh, please do it for me, please. He'd be like, if I do it for you, are you going to stop doing some stuff you do? What, what do you? what would you give for this? And most folk would be, I just would appreciate you. God, be, he can read hearts and thoughts, and he smells the smoke. You read it, how many times in the Lord, and the Lord smell the smoke. Soon as, soon as uh, 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 Noah and them got off the ark, uh, Genesis chapter 8, they built an altar, and then the Lord smelled the smoke, the Bible said. And what he doing? He's sitting up in heaven and listening to the earth. What is he doing? He's not just watching, but he's smelling the smoke. That's why when people bring in praise, we went through all the praise teams and all the choir, and God said, look at all them homosexuals. Look at all them whoremongers. Look at all them hellions and hell raisers. You think I'm getting glory out of that? Look at all them preachers and what all they doing behind closed doors. I ain't listening to all that. We like, hey, it got to be, because look at Brother Steve's church. That's big. God be like, I ain't into that. I'm looking for a pure heart. Pure hands, pure praise. I can raise up some Davids, man. Bring me a pure sacrifice. And if you got to stay there, stay there until it become ashes. And I can tell when my meat is done. <laughs> and I can raise it up. And that's what's going to bring revival to the land. Not a big old Coliseum. God done proved that. I don't care nothing about your big maybe centers, your big old Coliseums, your big running around places, all y'all taking trips down there. That stuff don't mean nothing to me. I'm looking for some people who will humble themselves and pray. And out of them, I'm going to raise up prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. A remnant of people. People that humble themselves. Go through the threshing floor. Repent. Let their lives, I, and I'll restore to you the years, thank you, Holy Ghost, the years that the canker worm, the caterpillar, and they, all them folk that, that, that people, family members talked about you and went away. And he says, I will restore to you. Some of them people going to come back kneeling down and saying, oh, my God. It ain't about you. It's about my glory. But I got to kill you. Like Joshua, you for me or you for them? And that angel said, I ain't for neither one of you. I'm for the Lord. We're in the last day. That's the revelation. So you don't have to feel, well, I didn't do this for my mom. We all are there. And even some great people who know God had to deal with this blanket of unbelief that's in the earth. COVID shook everybody up. But now we didn't kind of got, well, I we think you can deal with COVID. But that C word will make a whole lot of people wet their pants. Excuse me. I ain't trying to be vulgar. Let the C word. The COVID, they just say, oh, well, we can get a mask. We can get good. But let that doctor say, you got the C. They all need stored rattling behind that C word. And it ain't nothing but a disease that Jesus died for. Folk will think you crazy to preach about cancer. God will heal cancer. They say, oh, man, he owns something. But if he didn't cure cancer, he didn't cure, cure any other kind of sin. They come by hearing. You were just doing the best you could. 
But see, this generation, this quick here, don't talk about it. You didn't have nothing to believe in. God will cure cancer, breast cancer, kidney cancer, prostate cancer, and what's that other one, that, that real, real bad one? Uh, they all the same, uh, colon cancer, but it's the one that I think about, pancreas cancer. God will cure cancer. He has cured cancer. daughter, but let me say to you, and I love you, and that's, uh, that is what we say, but when my child is dying and somebody I love is dying, that ain't good enough for me, and I believe you, and, and we all have resorted to that, and especially the preacher, in comforting people, well, they, 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 they. But, that, but the God we serve will heal you a cancer on this side. He will heal hearts on this side. But how shall they hear without a preacher? And the problem begins with us, the preacher. How shall they hear? How shall they believe if the preachers of this generation don't preach it? That's the problem. That's the problem, children of God. How shall they believe except the preachers preach more about it than about prosperity? And you look good in a new car. And God's going to bless you. This is going to be your year to get a new house. That's why the preacher has to give himself to fasting and praying. That's the preacher's job. And if all our preachers is working, trying to hold two jobs so they can drive their Mercedes and live in a big house so they can prove to everybody they walking by faith, that is not a faith walk. Making a house note of $2,000 a month, working two jobs, is not a faith walk. And you can't pray. You ain't got time to pray or read a Bible. And you can wear nice clothes. That is not a faith walk, brother, sister. Because you got the best car on the parking lot. And you living in the best house, amongst the best house in the congregation. That ain't a faith walk. And you got too many pastors, evangelists, prophets, and apostles. That's what they got to do. That's why the sheep are lean. Got to run, run out and hustle and be a greeter at Walmart. Because you got congregations that say, I don't want to take care of no minister. So they're more happy if he working 60 to 80 hours a week. Because they walking in unbelief. Because they don't see the spiritual principle of what God would do if they had somebody who was seeking the Lord through fasting and praying. That's a whole nother subject. I, ain't, I just want to talk, man. I ain't even come to do this like this. So let's move on. I don't even want to do that. This is supposed to be Bible class. Y'all don't understand. I just only want to do it. But here, let's move on. Let's move on. Don't, I'm, I hear you, sister. But if something happened to you, my beloved, you want me to do more and say, well, Bless the Lord, she got a house over there. You want me to stand <laughs> and say, rebuke that demon. And death ain't nothing but a spirit. And the word of God says, go and preach the gospel and raise the what? Yeah. 
Oh, y'all looking at me like I'm lying. It's in your Bible. I dare you to bring me a Bible up here and it not be in there. Go and raise the dead. And the reason we don't believe it, if we go preachers, we go pray for, for them about to die. Lord, bless them. That uh, Gabriel and them be on, on, on the job when they get there. And Peter opened the gates. He ain't tell us go pray for nobody that they have a smooth transition. But we're afraid that people will laugh at us if we bust up in the room and say, put all these people out. Yeah, Get them out the room. One big old son-in-law, somebody, well, who you is, preacher? Come up in here. This my mom or my daddy. You can't come up in here. But Jesus did. He come up in there and say, get these folk out of here, all these unbelievers. Get them out of here. It's going to take that kind of boldness to save some of our kim folk. Come on. Thank you. And you have to be sure of that. But see, here's where, here's where, here's where it goes, sister. A lot of people say, well, it ain't God's will because she got cancer. And she got it in the fourth stage. Well, one man was blind. Or one man, Jesus said he was blind, but this was to the glory of God. So somebody could say, well, it ain't God's will for him to see because both eyes is blind. <laughs> you know, one eye was blind. You could say, well, God must want him to see because he can see out of one eye. <laughs> but, but both eyes was blind. He was blind from his mama's birth. So you could say that. He was blind. God didn't want him to see and he let him be born with at least one eye. But he was, he was blind from his mama's birth. Ain't that plenty of good reason to say it wasn't the will of the God, the will of the Lord? See, I heard what you said, but I'm saying, if you get around unbelievers, they will jive with you. But how, first thing, well, how old was she? <laughs> and if they're anything older than I am, they would say, they just shut up. They'd be thinking, she lived long enough. <laughs> Don't be nowhere near past 69. Folk just in their mind, but, well, that's kind of old. She's lived older, longer than my mama. That's what people do. So you cannot let anybody determine for you what's long enough. Jesus raised Lazarus and he still died, but he raised him. Who in this room will let somebody tell you it's enough? Somebody will tell you, how old are you, Pastor? Well, I'm, you know, over there. Well, well, you ought to be ready to go next week, right? The devil is alive. That's what people do. That's why I ain't listening to you. That's my mama. And if they still on the bed struggling and wiggling, saying, I want to stay, then that's good enough for me. Now, in some cases, they'll say, I want to go home. Okay, that's a whole different animal. I'm tired of suffering. And if they don't agree with you, that's different. But if you ask them, Mama, Daddy, you want to live some more? Yeah, I do. Well, let's work with this. Let's get us a preacher, a believer, church praying. They're believing. But if they're like, no, it's long. I want to go see your, your daddy. I want to go home be with my mama. Then, okay, now we got us a problem. But if you got all these unbelieving church folk walking up in there and say, well, she old enough, uh, honey. Might let your mama go. You know, get out of here. Amen. Well, it must not be God's will because the, the people that run over with the car, they can't catch them, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's my child. Get out of here. <laughs> Y'all to make me... Miss Ma, yeah. <laughs> See, y'all take too many church folk with y'all into the room. And man, I'm gonna tell you, I've been in there. I've been in the room, man. I was in the room with a cousin, and he he passed away. But man, I couldn't get them others 
They might be listening. I don't care. But I couldn't get them rest of them, man. They all of them like vultures. Like, what, 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 what you saying? I'm like, man, I'm rolling my eyes. Like, man, what you, you know? <laughs> Give me a minute. It gets sticky. Then you got that one that they the guardian. You know, like they, they fanning flies at the picnic. You know, they standing there. And you just want to just get out the room, ain't he? They all religious. They don't believe. And sometimes the ones that should be the believers are the least to believe. Because their integrity is on the line. If it be said that uh, Pastor Steve went up in there and girl, he come up in there slinging all and hollering and, 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 and showing holy water all over the place and she still died, you know, then you got to go back to the church in the morning. Look at everybody. <laughs> that's true. You laughing, but that's the truth. Because it happened to the disciples. Oh, lunatic boy was falling in the fire, falling in the water. The man got all discouraged, and he said, Lord, I brought my child to your, your men. He fell in the water. He fell in the fire, and they couldn't help him. And Jesus said, y'all unbelieving uh, ministers, he said, bring him to me. And then when they got along with Jesus, they said, Lord, why couldn't we do it? He said, because of your unbelief. These kind coming not but by fasting and praying. Y'all eating all the time. He didn't say to them all. He rebuked them. So ministers, we have to fast and pray. Believers. You ain't got to have a title to go in and raise up a cousin or somebody. I look forward to the day when they have a funeral. In my imagination, my God, and it ain't for vain glory, but I would love to be there. I don't have to be the preacher. But right in the middle of the funeral, when it comes to have visitation, it happened to Jesus. They was taking him in the buyer, and Jesus, my God, raised him up. It's supposed to happen. We're supposed to say, Robert, get up. I want to see how they break the door down in the mortuary. Right? The organ will be playing flat note. Undertaker's wig come off. Lord, have mercy. What would you do? Start worshiping. It's in the old Bible. He didn't put it in there for a joke. He said, greater words shall you do. Stop funerals. It ain't over. But it's going to take somebody that got enough boldness to say, wait a minute. Mama, get up. In Jesus' name. <laughs> Woo -hoo! What a service. <laughs> Woo, what a service. <laughs> what a service. It's in your Bible. But that comes through fasting and prayer. That comes through people that walk in with Jesus. If it's in the book, it can happen again. Why am I talking to you like this? Because it's time for us to quit believing that uh, E.B. Koontz, y'all don't know them, that's a mortuary in St. Louis. They got the last say. That the, that the Hunt brothers got the last say. When Jesus died, the folk that had already been buried got up. Now, wouldn't that be something? <laughs> wouldn't that be something? The folk that had already been buried. What if your kin start walking up in here? Would thou believest then? <laughs> Woo I'm ready for that. I'm ready for some different kind of church. That's why we want to fast and pray. I'm ready for some different kind of church. I'm ready to see a man in white clothing says, why seek ye the living among the dead? Hallelujah. Come on, raise your hand. Oh, y'all just like it the way it is. No, I don't. Come on, worship. Why, these, these young people have a right to see the glory of God. 
Praise God. Fasting and praying, Joshua fat them, got in trouble, and there was a great host against them. And the word of the Lord came to them. Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the spirit of the Lord came on them in the midst of the whole congregation. This is what fasting and praying will do. God will give a word for the whole congregation, not a thought or idea, but a revelation. It says, thus said the Lord, be not afraid, nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours. You shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, set yourselves, set yourselves. Don't do nothing. Stand ye still. You ain't got to go do nothing. Set yourself. The modern church is always, we got to go do this. We got to run and do it. No, set yourselves fast and pray. That's what they were doing. When they got the bad news, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. O Jude and Jerusalem, fear not, not, uh, not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. That's what fasting does. When to call for a fast when you're falling into sin. A sudden attack from the enemy on your ministry, your health, your family, your finances. You sense a loss of spiritual power. You want an increase of God's anointing. Amen. All of that. You get angry, irritated, find fault with other people often. No longer passion for winning souls. Someone dear to you, backsliding, absent from fellowship with no reason, always making an excuse. The Lord has opened a door for you, but the enemy is standing in the way. Even when the Lord opens a door for you, it's a reason to fast and pray. The Bible's full of, and the Lord opened a door, but Satan resisted us. We think, well, the Lord opened a door, it's easy breezy. Let's go get something to eat. No. Satan is a master at plugging holes. You have prayed and prayed and prayed for something you believe is the will of God. It may be your answer is blocked, being blocked by demonic powers. Happens all the time. You want some spiritual gift or visitation from the Lord so badly that you feel you must fast and pray. A lot of believers don't want any spiritual gifts. They think, and there was a time, a movement, when, man, these guys were prophesying. They were making Buku money, just go and telling people, you have a gift for this or that. And people were handing them money, hand over fist, and the gifts wasn't working. They take it home, and <laughs> they open up the package, and there wasn't nothing there. The Lord is calling you. Amen. Eating habits before fast. Cut down on the amount of food you eat. Yeah, start now. Start cutting out. Special carbohydrates, sweet stuff. Amen. Uh, start looking over your place of withdrawal. You know, your place where you're going to have your candlestick. And also, for those of you who are couples, just realize that certain portion of it you can do together, certain portion of it you can't do together. You're living in a house with somebody, certain portion you can do together, certain portion you can't do together. You can't be carbon copies like ring a bell. Okay, it's time for us to eat, time for us to do. If y'all got it like that, fine. But you have two different spirits. You have one spirit, but you're two different individuals. So there's going to be one time when one of you going to want to move over here, go over here, do it this way. Don't get into bondage over that. Why just start without me? You know, this ain't uh, dinner, you know. Don't put each other into bondage, okay? Uh, uh, yeah, you know, so if you, if you and, and then uh, I should say that if you're fasting in a house and you're fasting by yourself and the other people in the house are not fasting, yeah, you can't put them in bondage either. Amen. You know. Say you're, you're fasting, your wife's not fasting, or your children, uh, grown children, or whatever, you know. You got to work that out. You, um, we'll get into that. Reasons to fast, personal blessings. Yeah, that's a big one. On behalf of a brother or sister, there's the intercession. On behalf of the church, that's usually the bottom on a lot of people's heart today, you know. Uh, a ministry, that gets up a little higher. The world, that gets down just above, uh, right there with the church. Those are reasons to fast, and they're all good reasons, but I'm going to give you one of the best reasons to fast. The highest aspect of fasting can be found in Acts 13, 1 to 3. Now, there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Simeon that was called Niger. And Lucius of Cyrene and Manaen, which had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch and Saul, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted. They ministered to the Lord and fasted. The Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereinto I have called them. 
And when they had fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them, they sent them away. The greatest reason to fast or aspect of fasting is to minister to the Lord. Again, we don't hear a lot about it. We don't hear a lot of people doing it. But it's when you're not fasting for any of the above reason, personal blessings, which is, is nothing wrong with doing the others. You know, I need a blessing on behalf of brother or sister, a child, a loved one, a sibling, uh, uh, or a spouse, the church, a ministry, or even fasting for the world. We say, well, I'm fasting for the world, then that's for the Lord. But there is another place, and that's where you're just ministering to the Lord. That's what they do around the throne when they're saying, worthy, thou worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor. That's ministering to the Lord, where you're just going to fast and you are not going to ask for anything, you know. And it, it gets a little, you have to be disciplined. I'm not, you know, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong if you do, but that's a whole other level where you're just coming before God. Remember Solomon when he said, ask me what I should give you. What do you want? And Solomon just said, I just want wisdom that I can go in and out among your people. He said, because you haven't asked me for money, and you haven't asked me for riches, and you haven't asked me for the life of your enemies, he says, I'm going to give you the money, and I'm going to give you the, uh, the riches, and, and um, et cetera, et cetera. But there is a, the highest order, whether you fast for one day or three days, is when you just minister to the Lord. You just wash his feet. Amen. That's sending smoke before the Lord. You're moving beyond, I just brought my body to you. You're moving beyond, I'm here to say how sorry I am because I keep on doing the same thing over and over. You're moving to the place now where you're just sending smoke signals to him. Amen. Uh, Levi is to carry the ark. That's the glory. Deuteronomy 10 and 8. 